Now, I think, and maybe I want to know if you think, that it is time. This is a cage. This is the cage that women have been put in for centuries. And I want to know, isn't it time for us to awaken our inner guru and to open the door to our cage and to fly free? Who wants to do that? Type in and tell me yes or no. If you would like to open the door to the cage that Big Pharma has put us in, that Western medicine has put us in, that individuals who tell us one surgery, one exercise, one pill is going to heal us, gimmicks have put us in. And over and over again, what happens? We fall for it. We fall for it and we fall for it and we don't make changes and we're stuck in our cages. We're stuck in the cages that they have put us in. But you know what? I'm going to give you tips and tools on how to awaken your guru so that you can open this door to your cage and fly free. Because now more than ever, we know that we have to take care of our health. And no matter what happens in the world, no matter what is going on, and there's a lot of chaos, a lot of chaos, a lot of panic, a lot of fear. But the bottom line is that the only way that we're going to be free is when we start with our health, when we start to take care of ourselves, right? Why is it that the average woman still does not know her sacred anatomy? Why is it that we don't even know how beautiful we are and there's so much genital shaming? When every single one of us is built uniquely and different from the other person. So if you're ready to open the door to your cage, and let me tell you, sometimes we're in a cage, we don't even know we're in a cage, okay? I was in a cage. Did I know I was in a cage? No, I didn't even know I was in a cage for years. Running around in the doctor roadshow, hopping from one doctor to another doctor, looking for answers when I should have known all along that everything I needed was within me. Everything. And the moment that we don't trust ourselves, the moment that we outsource our health, the moment that we say, hey, someone, please, hey, please come and save me. Right? How many of us are saying that now? Hey, please, someone come and save me. I was there too when this whole thing started. I was scared. I was lost. I have no shame in saying that because the truth is the truth, right? Now, I have a solution for you, right? Everybody knows that every year I do my big masterclass. So type in the word masterclass to get an invite. It's a free class that I'm going to give you the best that I can. By the way, I just finished it today. Thank God. And um, it is very different. You know, it's going to open up everyone's mind. You're going to leave there with some tangible tools. I don't believe in fluff. I don't believe in gimmicks, right? I believe in truth. And I believe in science-based truth, clinically proven truth. And that's what I'm going to bring to you, right? Now, many of us suffer with our lady parts issues, our bladder issues, our back pain, low back pain, hip pain, sacroiliac joint pain, right? Why? Because we don't know the simple little things that we need to do for ourselves to open up the cage. I love this prop. I took this from my daughter's room. <laughs> open up the door so that we can fly free. And every, this is our birthright. This is it. This is the moment that you're going to say, where do I, what do I stand for in my own life? And I know that this is a master class that I'm, that I'm doing, but this is bigger than that. This is about collective healing. This is about all women coming together as a collective force and saying, you know what? We're not taking it anymore. We're not taking what you're buying. Okay. We're not buying what you're selling. Because most of that that's out there in the market right now is these individuals making money on women's backs. And unless we say no to it, unless we open the door to the cage that they have put us in, we will be their little puppets. 
And we will make decisions not based on informed consent because everybody knows that I am big on what? Informed consent. And informed consent, when someone, that's step one, by the way, so now I'm going into my steps. I'm going to give you five steps on how to awaken your inner guru, the one that lives inside you already. Because we know that everything that we need is within us. That we don't have to outsource or be looking like this for a hero to come and save us. Because no one's going to save you. The only one that can save you is you. The only one that can bring you back home to vitality, to wholeness, to self-acceptance is you. And I'm not just saying this because of because because it's the truth. That's why I'm saying this. Because, Hi, Kathy. How are you from Canada? Welcome. Welcome to the Pelvic Power Hour, everyone. I'm Isa Herrera, and I help women have happier lady parts. I've written five books on the topic of pelvic health. And I have a bunch of accolades that I can just go talking about for three hours, but that's not what really matters here. What really matters is that not so long ago, I was in a cage, right? I can look back at it with humor now. When I was going through it, it wasn't humorous. It was actually very painful and very sad. And I almost lost my marriage. I almost lost everything because I was in a cage. And I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust myself enough, even though I'm a physical therapist, to liberate myself because in my family i never learned that i never learned self-empowerment i never learned about putting myself first i never learned these little these little tips and these tools that really help awaken our inner guru so the first step to awaken your inner guru which is going to be the most obvious step is listen to your intuition listen to that little voice in your head that's constantly doing this and telling you, hey, listen, this is what really, this is what you really need. But what happens is that as women, we don't trust ourselves. We've been indoctrinated. I don't know why you have man games on us with the media, with, you know, with the doctors, with big pharma, telling us that we need one gimmick. This is the dangling carrot syndrome. One gimmick, one exercise, one pill, and one surgery to make us whole. And that is bull crap. Bull crap. You know why it's bull crap? Because we are dynamic, beautiful women. And it's everything that matters. Not only our physical being, but also our mental well-being, our spiritual well-being, right? But when we don't listen to that inner voice, when we squash down that voice, and I've done it too, I'm very guilty of this myself. I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm not. I make mistakes all the time, even now, right? And I forgive myself for it. But when I haven't listened to that voice, when I've gone against that voice, it comes back and it is bad. And I don't know how many of you guys have had this experience when something is like you get an intuitive hit. They call it intuitive hit. And you're like, no, nah, I'm not going to listen to that because, you know, I'm going to listen to this individual because that individual knows better than me. That individual is smarter than me. Oh, that individual has a white coat, so he must know better than me. And you know what happens? We lose at the end. We end up getting surgeries we don't need. We end up getting um, pills. That whose side effects are worse than the condition that we have. We end up, you know, losing thousands of dollars on, on these gimmicks when in reality, all we really needed was an incredible coach who's been there and done that, not just somebody who's reading books and then come back, took a weekend course and say, oh, I took a weekend course and now I can help you. No, that's not going to cut it. That person cannot problem solve for you. That individual cannot open the door for you, help you open the door because we all need help. Even I need help. I have several coaches to help me, right? Um, so that's the first thing. Listen to your intuition. Now, one of the things that I've noticed with the 14,000 women that I've treated is that sometimes they're like this. Frozen. Suspended. Why? Because they feel that we have to do what? 
we have to take perfect action. And let me tell you something, I suffered about that. I'm going to write, I'm writing a digest to my community today where I'm going to talk about my issues with suffering from wanting to be perfect, right? Because to me, perfection meant that I was going to be loved because I grew up in a very house, in a very um, abusive household as a child, right? Not the great environment. So I was afraid to make any mistakes because if I made a mistake, I was going to get beating. So I went through my life, my entire life until very recently, wanting everything to be perfect. Even my damn sock drawer was perfect. Marie Kondo all the way, right? This thing hit and I just threw it all away. I just gave that up. And it was liberating. Liberating when I didn't have to be perfect. So what I did, my thing, when it comes to liberating ourselves from the cage, is not only listening to your intuition, but what? You must take imperfect action. I'm not saying go out there and be like, you know, hurt yourself. I'm talking about take action. No one is perfect. You cannot be a master when you try something for the first time. Like I get a lot of questions here, right? What can I do for this? What can I do for that? Everybody wants me to give them a recipe. Here's, everybody says, give me the recipe, give me the recipe. But this is faulty thinking. This is very faulty thinking. Of course, there are recipes that work. There are exercises that work. But your body may not respond the same way as somebody else's body is going to respond. So what do you do? You take imperfect action. You try something else. You shift the energy. You know, maybe you try this act, this exercise. But you can't be afraid to take action just because you might leak more, just because you might have more pain, just because you might feel more disconnected. Because the only way that we really learn about our bodies, right, is to experiment and to be curious. And so curiosity about our bodies is really critical. Like on my online program, and by the way, I am opening up my online program after the masterclass, so everybody knows. It's not for everybody. But it has a lot of really juicy information. And when I open enrollment, everybody wants the same thing, right? So we're like, what do I do? I take you and I hold your hand through the entire program. This is my live program where I open once a year. And actually, I opened it twice this year because of, of everything that's happening with the world. And I felt women needed the program again. I typically only open it once a year. But this year, I decided to do it again, okay? Because everybody's asking for help and I, I couldn't resist not helping. Okay. So the thing is take imperfect action, right? Start small, step through, start small and get rid of the energy vampires that are sucking on your blood, right? Because nothing is more hurtful to a woman than to not have a community of support. So you take imperfect action. You take small steps. Because how do you move a mountain? You move a mountain one little rock at a time. And every step that you take forward, no matter how small it is, it's another step towards your destiny. It's another step towards reclaiming your queendom. It's another step towards reclaiming your pelvic power. That's the name of my masterclass. It's called pelvic power right? Because that's what women need now, right? Because when you feel fantastic in your lady parts, everything is better, right? So type in the word masterclass. You're going to get the invite in Messenger, but uh, we're also going to put the link up. So if we can put the link up, that would be great, okay? Now let's review. Listen to your inner voice. Take imperfect action. Start small. Get rid of the energy vampires. People who suck you dry, who are an obstacle to where you want to be. And I'm not saying you got to be all mean about it. I'm not saying you got to get all crazy about it. I'm saying you got to take notice. You got to take notice when someone is in your space, especially now with everything that's going on, they're in your space and what happens? They prevent you from moving forward. 
They make you feel bad about yourself. They make you feel less than. They make you question things. Those are not the individuals you want in your life. I call them energy vampires. By the way, this is a, 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 a term uh, by Dr. Northrup, who I love with all my heart and my soul. And she has a whole thing on energy vampires. And you know what? I was thinking about this because uh, just yesterday, this happened to me. Just yesterday, I had to finish this big project for somebody who hired me to do some coaching for their for their uh, community, right? And someone, one of my friends came into my life, drama, drama 24-7. I should just call her drama 24-7. And she took me out of my swing. I, she sucked me into her process. And I had to stay up half the night to finish my project. I was so tired. I almost didn't think I was going to be able to do this, this show today. And I realized, oh, how apropos that I'm going to talk about energy vampires. And I just had one sucking on my blood and sucked everything out of me yesterday. And I let it happen. Instead of saying, listen, I love you dearly with all my heart. I know that you're suffering. Let's let's talk about this tomorrow because I'm on a deadline and I need to finish this deadline. But instead of doing that, you know what I did? I went right into the drama. I went right into savior mode. And then I hurt myself and I hurt my family and I was in a bad mood and it was really bad. And so get rid of the energy vampires and step four counts your wins. I think that so many times when we try to awaken our inner guru and we're trying to do things and we're trying to, to, to change our destiny, our legacies, heal our bodies, heal our businesses, whatever it is, we forget that when we accomplish something and we win and things are better that we should acknowledge that. That we should pat ourselves on the back. That we should say, good for you, Isa, that you accomplished that, no matter how small it is. But that we start every day with that sort of positivity, right? We start every day with, oh shit, now I'm behind the eight ball. Oh my God, I, I'm staying half the night. No, this is how my whole day went. No, you wake up and you say, wow, I finished the project online on time. I, 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 I did what I said I would do. And that's an accomplishment. Going for my walk this morning, even though I, I only had like one eye open, an accomplishment that I should be grateful for, that I put myself first, right? So this is important. Bev, what are the best exercises for the pelvic floor? You need to show up to my master class. You want the answer to that? Sign up for the master class. I'm going to be giving that away. There's so many, I can't even, that is such a big question. I would be here for three hours to answer that question, okay? You got questions like that, you need to come to my masterclass, all right? Um, and step five is seek help. If you need help, seek help from a coach, from a mentor, go to my masterclass. I think it's important that we don't do it on our own. Um, I think it's important that we seek the right kind of help, that we stop looking for uh and falling for the dangly carrot syndrome, which <laughs> this this is out there, okay? This makes me sick to my stomach. Every other ad that I see on Facebook is a dangling carrot syndrome, promising you Nevada, and it's going to bring you really nowhere. It really isn't, okay? So we need to stop falling for that, and I'm going to be discussing that on the masterclass. So I am super grateful to be able to come here, and and really, to be honest with you, I think that the big problem with modern medicine is that it's really biased against women. It's really biased against us. It's always been there, that writing on the wall. But now with everything that's happening, you can see it even more than ever. And now more than ever, we need to become our own medicine chess cabinet, our own medicine chess cabinet, right? We need to understand how to take care of our bodies so that we could heal ourselves and if we need help we seek help but that we don't continue to fall for promises that can never be kept promises that lead us down the yellow brick road of despair that infect us with hopelessness because what happens is and i see this over and over again when women don't awaken the inner guru when they continue to look outside themselves and outsource that health we get infected. We get infected because many individuals don't know 
about public health. They don't have the experience. The women in my online class now, in my online program, they know more than their doctors because they've made it their mission to understand their sacred anatomy. And for us, having our womanhood working and being beautiful and and giving us pleasure and connection and making us feel sexy and, and, and vibrant and confident and not having to wear panty liners or diapers or being in pain and understanding the interconnection between our womanhood and the rest of our body, that's where the true magic is at. That's where magic lies, right? Because the guru lies within you. There's no one outside of you that knows more about you than you. There's no one outside of you who's the master of your own body, who's the master of your inner workings. And when we open ourselves up to that, when we face that inner truth, then we are liberated. We're liberated from the cage that they have put us on, right? Because there's so many individuals out there who really just want us to be in our cages. Why? Because they make money of women's backs. And they're making millions of dollars. And billions. The panty line industry is a billion dollar industry on our backs. And I don't think that we should take that anymore. I think the moment is now for us to say, you know what? No, I'm not doing this anymore. And it starts by understanding your own unique anatomy. If you don't know anything about your anatomy and you're like all like blanked out, then how are you ever going to feel incredible again about yourself? How are you going to do the things that you love without fear and inhibition, right? So, okay, I, there's a question here. Let me, okay, there's several questions. Is there hope for those? This is from Laura. There's hope for us, for those who have complete hysterectomies. Yes, absolutely, there's hope. The one thing about hysterectomies that I think, and this is when I talk about informed consent, rarely is informed consent given and risk versus um, benefit about the hysterectomy. But with hysterectomies, you have to work a little harder on your pelvic floor muscles and your core and balancing out your pelvis, right? Because um, the, the uterus has been removed, of course, and then there's a, there's a weakness within the pelvis. And the literature shows that within three years, most women who have hysterectomies will experience a pelvic organ prolapse. But what they're not given is the second part of the recipe, which is like, yeah, you need pelvic health. And you need a self-care program that you can do in the comfort of what? Of your home by yourself. And if you need to get mentorship, by the way, I have coaches that are trained by me. Make sure that you put the link up. If you want to hire one of my coaches, you should. Because we can't do it alone. I'm looking for questions. Okay, this is from Jennifer. I have a question about prolapses. I've mostly healed mine, but I'm pregnant again. What can I do to prevent reoccurrence? I think, Jennifer, I'm, I'm glad that you're pregnant. You, you'll be a great candidate for my um, female pelvic freedom program. But one of the things with pregnancy that we should be really aware of, and also in the postpartum period, and basically or anytime for women, is making sure that you, you don't have a diastasis recti separation and working with the core, right? Because there's a lot of pressure on the belly. And as we have a diastasis recti separation, which is a separation of the six-pack muscle, it makes pregnant women very vulnerable to prolapsing right? Also very important, Jennifer, that you listen to your body, because if you are in a situation where your body is communicating, and that was step one, listening to our intuition, then you have to readjust, right? If you're pregnant and you're feeling and you healed it, that's great. But if you're feeling more symptoms, then you have to question what it is that you're doing right there. And you have to make appropriate modifications. But women with who are pregnant uh, benefit greatly from this program and from my masterclass as well. Also, I mean, there'll be some modifications, but Nevertheless, I think having a very strong core, because in pregnancy, a lot of women don't think that they have a core. They think they're pregnant, so they're like, oh, I'm pregnant. Well, okay, they don't flop out. No, you got to work on your core, especially if you have a pelvic organ prolapse, especially if you're leaking in pregnancy, right? So you got to do all these protective exercises and all these biomechanical uh, uh, protective exercises, which I will cover 
I cover in my program and some in my masterclass, okay? This is from Mara. I have a question about prolapse. Prolapse 2. My 79-year-old mother has extreme advanced uterine prolapse that her press rate won't help. Do you have any advice for her? Okay. So when is this kind of um, advanced? First of all, a press rate in conjunction with some pelvic floor exercises could help her. If she's not doing pelvic floor exercises, she needs to get on a, on a core program and she needs to get on a, a Kegel reverse Kegel program and she needs to watch her body mechanics. When we are older women, you know, over 70, and by the way, I have women up to 96 in my programs, um, there's always a possibility for improvement of the symptoms. Is the, the prolapse going to re, re, re-engage and be repositioned? I don't, I don't think so. But you can become less symptomatic and then the pessary will be able to help her more. Because the thing is, the pessary is a good tool, but you still need to work on your pelvic floor muscles. You still need to work on your core. You still need to work on your body mechanics. You still need to work on your breath and your toileting habits, right? Because when it comes to women's health and women's uh, pelvic health, everything matters. It's not just this. We have to stop seeing ourselves as a vagina. Okay, that's what we do. Oh, pelvic health, it's all about the vagina. Well, no, it's not. It's not. And this is a big problem, and I'm going to cover this on my masterclass. It's about the whole collective area, everything that attaches above and everything that attaches below, right, and to the side. But if we start to think of ourselves microscopically, right, and I'm going to cover this in great detail, then we're going to fail no matter what. You'll fail because your thinking is too narrow. And when it comes to women's diet, being vibrant and being beautiful and being strong, we can't be narrow thinkers. That's, that the doctors be that. They're the narrow thinkers. One Band-Aid, one exercise, one surgery. Band-Aids. All of it. And one pill. Let's not forget that. Can someone recommend, okay, Marion Castro, can you recommend someone who knows and has patients with proper Pessary fitting. Hmm. Uh, you would have to DM me that. And we I don't know what state you live in. I have no idea where you're at. But sometimes a pessary fitting can take four, five, six times because it's an art, it's like a lost art form, right? In the old days, women oh, women were given pessaries all the time. Now they just take your organs out, right? And then to get a pessary that actually fits, don't get discouraged if it takes four, five, six times, right? And if you got to try multiple clinicians, that's that's okay. Rome wasn't built in a day. Do you have specific exercises for joint SI joint dysfunction? Yes, I do, and you should definitely join the masterclass. I'm going to be giving universal exercises um, for SI joint dysfunction. I think the most important thing that you can do with that. Let me think about because SI joint dysfunction is it's usually a pelvic floor issue. It's an issue of correcting the pelvis, and that's a lot for me to cover here. But I think one of the things that you should be careful with if you have SI joint dysfunction is making sure that you're not sitting all slumpy, right, in your chair, and making sure that you can do something with a bridge, a bridging exercise, and putting your hands onto the floor to activate the thoracolumbar fascia that inserts into the sacrum. Because when we're working with say SI joint dysfunction, we want to work a multi-layer approach. We don't want to be thinking that it's just muscular approach that's going to work. And I call this the unkegel approach. And I'm going to cover that in my, an unkegel is using fascia to make a muscle stronger. So I think bridging would be something that you can work as long as it doesn't hurt your back and check with your doctor. Jenny Lynn, this may seem silly, but is there a correlation between gardening and leaking? Yeah, there is. As a matter of fact, with gardening, sometimes if there's like, um, you know, like low, like like squatting postures, sometimes that puts a lot of pressure on the bladder, right? Sometimes if women are gardening, they are also what dehydrated. They may not be drinking enough because they're afraid that they have to pee. And then that aggravates the bladder and then the bladder becomes more irritated. And then when bladders become more irritated, then you leak more. Does that make sense? So I think with gardening, get a gardening chair, 
Make sure your back is straight. Don't don't press down into the belly. Make sure that your breathing is fluid, that you're not like, <gasps> you know, because it's hot outside. Make sure you have a hat on and make sure you stay as cool as possible because if, you're, if your breathing becomes labor and then you increase intra-abdominal pressure, which is what happens when you have a faulty breathing pattern, which I'm going to be discussing on the masterclass, then what happens is you leak. But you don't leak because the muscles are weak. Well, they are, but you also leak because there's too much pressure within the body and you need to adjust that. I'm 66 and I had Botox injections that didn't work. Wear diapers 24-7. Betty, I'm really sorry to hear that. I want you to know that Botox injections and, 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 and now they're doing Botox injections into the bladder. Before it used to be into the vagina right? To calm the nerves down. And then that would give women fecal incontinence, which was insane. All the things that I saw with Botox injection, the first line of defense for all of these issues will always be lifestyle medicine will always be pelvic self-care. That is your first line of defense. Once you've exhausted that, and only when you have exhausted that and nothing else has worked and you have given it your best shot, 100% 100% effort. Because if you want something, you got to put in the effort. Too many times I see half ass effort in people's programs. And that's why they don't accomplish their goals. And then they come back and they're like, it didn't work. Well, it didn't work because sometimes healing takes time. Healing is not a linear process. It was linear. Boy, I would take you there in a minute and I would give it to you. But it's not like that right? And we have to take responsibility. And I'm not blaming anyone here. I'm just saying that sometimes this condition brings us down. It depresses us. It makes us anxious, right? That's what happened to me. I was depressed. I was anxious. And then when I became depressed and anxious, I wouldn't do my work. So it was like a vicious cycle, which is why you need a community of women around you, right? which is why my programs have a community of women where you can come and feel supported by like-minded women. Okay, I think one more and then... Is there a difference with prolapse if one has a vaginal hysterectomy versus open procedure? Is there a difference between the both? I don't know. I don't know. But when there's been a hysterectomy, regardless of the procedure, women do prolapse because the integrity of the structure has been, um, it's not as strong as it used to be and everything else around that is trying to hold on and then it holds on too much and then it becomes exhausted. And then in that exhaustion, you, there's weakness that's created. And when there's weakness and exhaustion, right, from trying to hold on, things just drop into the pelvis or outside the pelvis. All right. I was told that I have weak internal pelvic muscles. They hurt to the touch. When they were examined by my gynecologist, she said I need a physical therapy. I can feel that they're weak and they have changed that I can definitely feel and not for the better. Yeah, I think is is your program something that can help me? Yes. This is what happens. Okay, Nikki, this is a very good question because I think that this is something that happens to a lot of women, right? Right. Can you put that question up? Because I have to refer to the question again. Okay. Um, When you go in and you start to work on the pelvic floor muscles and there's a lot of pain, like vulvodynia, vaginismus, vestibular vulvodynia, SI joint pain, uh, fibromyalgia, I mean, all these conditions, polycystic ovarian syndrome are really, these are conditions that are, that are related to pain, right? Pelvic pain. And you start to work on the muscles and you start to release the pain. What happens is that the weakness that's already there becomes more exposed and you become more symptomatic. Because when you're taking energy out, imagine that pain is energy that's trapped, right? in the pelvis, and then you're taking the energy out. What's left is the truth. And the truth is that there's weakness, sometimes trigger points, sometimes spasms. Sometimes there's scar tissue in the the vagina that we don't even know about that needs to be addressed. 
So yes, it can help you. And if you want to see a physical therapist and in conjunction do the program, then I think it's a beautiful combination because you get the best of both worlds. You, you awaken yourself and you have someone guiding you. And by the way, I have a ton of coaches and that I'm going to open the coaches up for when I open up the enrollment as well. I'm looking for questions. Okay. What if you don't have a hysterectomy? Can you still have a prolapse? Well, that's an excellent question. The truth is that 55% of women, this is a crazy, crazy statistic, who have pelvic organ prolapse have never had children and have all their organs. Now you want to be thinking, why is that? Why is it that young women have prolapses who have never had kids, who have all their or all the other lady bits in 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 place? And that's because of lifestyle. That's because of pushing with defecation and urination. That's because of pounding on the body. That's because of of doing things that 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 create more pressure within us. That's by going to the gym and holding your breath, right? Because prolapse or being overweight is a big risk factor, right? So prolapse is not just about weakness, but it's also about lifestyle. And how do we change our lifestyle to get stronger so we're less symptomatic? But so many of us don't know. Because let's face it, when was the last time somebody told, well, I didn't learn anything. You know what my, my, my public education was when I was a child? Wipe from front to back. And that was supposed to be like pelvic education for women, right? The majority of us don't even know our anatomy, which is why we all start in the program with the anatomy. Because I'd like all women to know their anatomy. Because when you know your sacred anatomy, you can do almost any technique on yourself and feel safe with it. This is from Liz. Have you ever heard of feelings of intense cramping from becoming aroused or orgasm, but not the rest of the time? Yes, that is very common. Sometimes what happens with this particular condition is painful um, orgasms. And by the way, this is a real thing. I, every time I, somebody brings this up, people think it's not real. This is very real. This happens when there's some hypertone, there's, there's tension in the pelvis. And when a woman has an orgasm, what's happening? The pelvic floor muscles contract right? Boom. And they relax. But what happens with this condition list, thank you for putting this question up, is that the pelvic floor muscles do this, contract, and they stay contracted. And instead of feeling pleasure, sometimes you feel like you got to pee. Sometimes you have pain. I used to have this one woman that I treated. She would roll on the floor. She came in with her husband every time she had an orgasm from pain, right? And from becoming arousal, typically you have to work on the pelvic floor muscles, not only inside, but also on the outside because the dorsal nerve to the clitoris and the pudendal nerve has a lot of, it's, it's very detailed, but it has a lot of things that you can do externally to normalize this. So it's not always internal work. This is from Ruth. I've had two bladder tucks and they're considering a third for a prolapse bladder and vagina. Oh, Ruth, really? You know what? Informed consent. How many times... I'm curious to know if your doctor gave you informed consent. I mean, how many times do we have to go and and they do this and we fall for it? What about going back to the doctor and say, thank you very much. What are the alternatives that I can do right now to help myself so that I can become stronger and see if natural lifestyle medicine, pelvic therapy, will be the thing that will bring me forth. Because if a woman has had one bladder tuck, two bladder tucks, and now they want a third bladder tuck, girl, that is like some, like, like, hello. I mean, I would be like, what the hell? Now, this, who was it that put that, Ruth? By the way, that is common. Put this up because this is very common. This is not an uncommon situation. This is not uncommon. This is very common right? Because when you go and you deal with Western medicine, what is it? They give you band-aid solutions. And instead of saying, hey, Ruth, I want you to do a couple of exercises after you do the surgery, because I think it's going to, it's going to, it's going to make you better. They don't advise you on that. And sometimes they don't even refer you out to a pelvic floor physical therapist. And it's a shame. 
it's a shame because they can do better. And then what I would do is I would always go back to the doctor and say, hey, man, you really misdiagnosed me there. You need to do better. So that the next woman that walks in that doctor's office knows and is taken care of because we can create a change for other women when we have suffered ourselves, right? I've suffered myself. I've had tons of procedures done. And I went back to every single doctor and I told them because they can't keep doing this to women. This is from Shirley. I had a uroplexy with my hysterectomy in my 30s. Now now I leak at 65 years old. Can your program help me? Yes, it can, Shirley. Absolutely, 100%, right? I had a woman right now who's 96 years old, which I, even I have my doubts say I'm like, 96, that's a, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot, you know? And she did really well with the program. I have Susan who's 76 and she suffered for 18 years. By the way, you can always go to my monster testimonial page, right? To check out what women are saying because I have real testimonials. Real testimonials from women so that you can see what's possible. And I like when women give testimonials when they've been successful with the program because it really, it's like, it helps us to see ourselves and the possibility, and the possibility, right? So many of us, we don't see that reflected back to us. So then we think that it's doomsday scenario, but it's not. It's not. I believe that these muscles don't age. I believe that they, they're they vital. I believe that they have vitality and vibrancy, and I believe that they can come back. Just like any other muscle in the body, um, when, when we, like, if you're 80 and, and you start exercising again, this is in the literature, I'm not making this up, your muscles respond like you were 25 years old. So I'm thinking, if that's my bicep and that's my quads, why are my vaginal muscles responding in the same way? So I'm just applying the science to this body part. And I've seen it over and over again that when women know what to do, when women know how to care for themselves, when women trust their inner guidance, they thrive. They don't just survive, right? And I, that's why I do the master class because I like everybody to first go to the master class. And then if it calls them to then join me in the summer of healing where I hold your hand through the whole thing and where I have my coaches holding your hand too, but mostly it's me. And I do that because I want to make sure that it's the right connection for you. You know, this is from Patricia. I was told when I was in my twenties, my bladder was inverted. Three kids, 30 years later on off incontinence. Does this make any sense? No, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. I don't even know what that means. Sometimes we go to a doctor and we get a diagnosis or they tell us something or sometimes somebody tells you something. No, it doesn't have to be a doctor. It'd be anyone. But, you know, I'm on the doctor. I'm on the doctor kick these days. OK, um, and they tell you something and then you know where it goes. It goes right here, right here, no, right here, right to your heart. And it becomes a part of who you are and it becomes a part of what you think is is you. And you don't change because you think this is who I am. This is what I've always been. I've been a woman who has fibromyalgia. I am a woman who has a hysterectomy. And then we forget that that closes us up because we've integrated that information into the fabric of our being, into our cytoplasm, into our energy. And then we become what they give us, that diagnosis. And you know what? Unless you check a diagnosis with two, three, four, five doctors, don't believe don't believe a word. Don't believe a word. You got to get confirmation. You got to get confirmation. If you don't get confirmation, then you start to believe something about yourself that's not true. And then you know what that does? That makes you feel that you feel bad about yourself. It puts you behind the eight ball. Then you start to feel like. There's no possibility for something better to happen, right? And then that's what makes me really sad about this whole industry. And I'm telling you, this whole thing that happened was such an awakening for me. And how disappointed I am in the field of women's health right now. Disappointed that no one is showing up the right way for women. And this can't happen anymore. And the only way that we can stop it is when we reclaim our power, when we know our bodies, when we know how to take care of ourselves, 
When we say no, show me the evidence. No, I need informed consent. No, I want to try something different. This is when we when when we say this is when we open the cage. By the way, this is my favorite. When we open the cage, we we'll open the door to the cage that they have put us in. Because when they keep us in the cage, they keep us powerless. And they take our power away. Because women are powerful. And when women unite and when women are connected to their inner power, there is nothing that they cannot accomplish. They can accomplish anything. And by the way, when you go to the master class, I hold all questions to the end. And at the end, I can give you better. Um, this is a public forum. My master class is a private forum. So my Q&As are epic, epic. I stay around for two hours and I give a bunch of healing recipes. So bring a little book. Okay, bring a little notebook. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, this is from Debbie. Can you go there? There's a lot of questions. I'm going to have to go back and answer these. Okay, I have a meeting in 14 minutes. I have not had any intercourse since my wedding eight years ago. It was very painful. I did not have sex for seven years before marriage. Um, and went through menopause. Could you please? I went through menopause. I have fibromyalgia. Is my pain caused by going through menopause without having intercourse? Well, no, 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 no. Okay. Write this down. Pelvic pain is a physical disorder. It's a physical condition. It is not a psychological disorder. It can affect you psychologically. When a woman has pain, whether it be because it's dryness, we take care of that. Once there's pain, you have to take care of what these muscles. You have to open them. You have to stretch them. You have to breathe into them because the, the thing with, 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 with intimacy pain is that it can be healed. And women don't have to live with that. And by the way, there's one out of three women suffer from intimacy pain. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an epidemic. And the thing is that a lot of times then I given the instruction on how to care for this sacred anatomy. Now it's not just about the pelvic floor because remember we're not just the vagina. You want to be thinking larger. You want to be thinking about the muscles that interconnect to that area. You want to be thinking about lifestyle medicine. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, there's always hope. There's no reason for you not to feel that connection with your partner. There's no reason for you not to feel that love and that pleasure. That is our birthright. Right? That is our birthright. Thank you, Mercedes. Okay, let me see. I saw one question up there. There's so many. I have to go back and answer them. Um, this is from Anne. I had a partial hysterectomy, anterior posterior repair at 24. Can you help me? I leak and have accidents with bowel movements. Yes, 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 yes. This can be helped. Sometimes... Um, when you have a hysterectomy, right, it, it, it creates major weakness in the pelvic floor, right? And it creates major weakness into anything that was attached to the uterus, right? The ligaments can also cr create um, sacral instability. So what happens there is that you need very specific types of Kegels that address the, 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 the rectum, right? We need to address the core. And we and if there's a hysterectomy, oh, 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 okay, okay, this is important, okay, because there, there's a lot of women here with hysterectomies today. And by the way, it's rampant. Twenty percent of hysterectomies are done because of pelvic pain, and you know what happens afterwards? The the women still same, they, they still have the same issue. It doesn't go away, right? Because why? They're not looking at the solutions. They're not looking at the culprit. So with that, you also have to think about scar therapy. A lot of hysterectomies, either internal scars or external scars, they need to be addressed. And I address that in my programs. Right, I want to thank everyone for being here. This was extraordinary. I love doing these. I love helping. I love doing the best that I can. Type in the word masterclass. Please share this, this right now. Hit the share button so it goes onto your timeline so you have it for later. Share this with the woman that you love. Share this with your mom. Share this with your girlfriend. Share this with your sister. Let's all come together, unite, right? Let's make this the revolution, right? Let's make this the way that we're going to move forward. 
let's 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 rise together collectively because that's what's really important i want every woman and by the way the master class is free i do this for free okay and for those who want to join me when i open up the program but then you can just join me okay so that's going to be pretty extraordinary it's the summer of public healing i walk you right through the whole thing it's, it's basically like this except that we're in a private situation so i can say more things here this is too this is facebook okay i'm sure and instagram so i'm sure that ai is watching over me <laughs> All right, guys, I want to thank you. Thank you again for being on my Pelvic Power Hour show. I will be here again next um, next Friday to answer questions to help as many as possible. Remember, oh, am I going to be here next Friday? Oh, no, I'm not. Because I have the master class next Friday. Oh, I forgot. Okay, the master class is June 17, 18, and 19. 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and on Friday is 1 p.m. So instead of meeting me here, Meet me at the master class. And then I'm going to say it uh, to the end. Thank you. You're always so uplifting. You're welcome. Thank you. This is from, from Instagram. I really love you guys. I love you guys so much. Um, I really feel like, like, like I'm doing something to change the world, right? This matters to me too. This is not just about, you know, me selling my programs. So this is a bigger mission for me. It's always been a bigger mission for me, right? To help women, I have a ton of free stuff that I give away to. I mean, it's the, the masterclass is just the beginning. Um, but I want to thank everyone for putting your trust in me. Please share this with women that you love, so they know how to care for themselves. And I, I'll see you next week, but at the masterclass because I forgot that I put it at one o'clock. So I'll see you at the masterclass, and then we'll resume after next week. Back to the pelvic power hour. Thank you for taking your time for you know being here and and trusting me enough you know oh this is my 100th episode i think i should be having like some sort of celebration or something i don't even know okay thank you everyone from the middle of my heart i love you guys so much oh thank you you saw me on the proven summit oh my god that was a moment for me that was a moment first of all i was interviewed for like two hours, but I was like, oh, you know what? This is going to be like one of those interviews where they interview for you for two hours, but then you get one minute, right? That happens a lot to me. They interview me and then I get one minute and I'm like, okay, I'm happy for that. I love Nick Pelosi. He's one of my idols. I love this man. I love his work. So when he asked me, I was like, whoa, this is a lot. And then he just laid it out there for pelvic, for women's health. That episode was such an awakening for women's health and women saw it and they were so happy and women got hope from it. And I think at the end of the day, when something awakens within you hope that things can be different, then that's what it's all about. So I was really excited and I couldn't believe all, all how much he put me up there. I was like, whoa, what is that? It was really awesome. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. I will see you at the master classes, make sure to look around. I'm sure you'll, you'll find the link. We put the link here too. Did we put the link? Okay, perfect. Thank you guys. I love you so much. Have a great weekend. Stay true to yourselves. Awaken your guru.